Hey friends. All right. Let's talk about natal charts. So we talked a little bit about all the different terms in astrology to really understand them. We talked about how astrology works. So now let's talk about probably the most popular aspect part of astrology that people know about, um, natal charts. So the, the place that I told you to go to astrology cafe where you can get a free natal chart done, um, is a great resource. If you haven't done that, go there and get yours. Your mind will be blown at the crazy accuracy of it. Seriously, it will. You'll be like, wowza, wowza. So go get that done. Check it out. It's free. Get it and let me know what you think. Um, so let's talk about what a natal chart is because it's different than your horoscope. It's much more detailed and way cooler. <laughs> so a natal chart, another word for it that, you know, you may have heard of is a birth chart. It's the same thing. There's a couple of other fancy names for it, but they're, they all refer to the same thing. You hear a lot of different terms and terminology that mean the same thing when it comes to astrology because there are different um, different kinds of astrology, different schools of thought. There's astrology from that originated in, in China. There's astrology that originated in Egypt. They're all over the place. So you'll hear different terms that mean the same thing, and, and that's why you, you see so many different ones. So basically what a natal chart is, is the, it's basically a map of the exact position of the planets at, in the sky at the time of your birth. Okay, so from where you were born, from the location that you were born, if you looked up into the sky at that very moment, you would be able to see certain planets and the sun and the moon, and then even they consider even like hundreds of other celestial bodies, um, the exact position those were in at, at the time of your birth. And the more specific you know, like if you know down to the minute what time you were born, the more accurate your chart is going to be because every second the, the planets and the sun and the moon and the stars are all moving, right? We're, we're all in motion here. So the more accurate you can be, the better, okay? Um, and because the position of the sky is different in different places, you could have a friend that was like born at the exact same time, but they were born in a different part of the country or even a few towns over from where you were born. And you could have different charts because it would look, the sky would look different from where you were. Also, twins don't usually have the same birth charts because they're usually born minutes apart. So you can be a identical twin and have a different natal chart than your twin. Okay, so I think that's kind of cool. So... The, the difference, I get asked a lot, what's the difference between a horoscope and a natal chart or a birth chart? So the difference is the a horoscope is the position of the sun at the, at the day and time of your birth, okay? A, hey Mary, a natal chart is the position of the sun, the moon, the eight planets, all the aspects, and hundreds of other celestial objects um, at the time of your birth. So, and it's taking information from all of those things. Most often you see a natal chart in the form of a wheel. It looks kind of like this. This is a blank one. Um, well, it's actually not blank. The, um, there are, are symbols for each um, zodiac. And so the symbols are filled in on this one. Um, and also the numbers for the houses um, are filled in on this one. But this is, would be something that an astrologer might use. Well, probably something they would have used 10 years ago. Now now it's all automated for them, I think. But if you wanted to, to do one, you could print out a blank chart like this that had this stuff filled in because these things don't change. And then you would you would fill in the position of all of, all of the planets and all of that good stuff on to here, what house they were in, all that fun stuff, okay? So um, it's a wheel. Because not all of the, the planets and stars and, and celestial bodies are visible from where you are at the time of your birth, right? So that's why you'll see, hopefully you can see this okay. See how it's divided into four? This line right here, above this line, these are the planets that will be visible if you looked up at the sky. Below it will be the planets that you would not see if you were looking up at the sky at that time. Because they're still there. They're just from where you are. They're like 
below the earth or to the side. It wouldn't be visible from, from looking up at the sky where you are. So those are taken into consideration too and form the bottom part of your chart. And you can tell when you, when you do your chart, if you have more planets on the top of this line, so more planets were visible at the time of your birth, or more celestial bodies and planets, um, then you are going to be a more extroverted person. And if more were, were hidden, you're going to be a more introverted person. And based on the ratio is going to be based on how much of an extrovert or introvert you are. So I think that's kind of neat too. Um, one of the things that I think is the coolest thing about birth charts, this this blows my mind and I've, I've seen people do it with accuracy and I think it's freaking amazing <laughs> it's something called rectification and what that is is if you don't know what time you were born okay let's say your mom doesn't remember um you know you can't i'm a mom i have to look it up usually i know around the time but i don't know to the minute off the top of my head um if that's not no maybe you have no ability to find that out like your mom just has no clue and didn't write it down because you're like one of five thousand children and she just doesn't know um she knows the day but she doesn't know the time with using rectification, an astrologer can actually figure out what time you were born. What? Right? And what they do is they study the, some other important life events and when they happened and the position of the planets um, when they happened. And by that, they determine where they think, it, usually in the range of an hour, um, where your birth time was. Isn't that so cool? So if you don't know, it can be found out if you have a good astrologer. So what they do is they start you at either noon or midnight. So if you don't know when you're filling out the astrology cafe one, you can do noon or midnight. Um, but it won't be as accurate. So you'll definitely want to see an astrologer because if you could say like, well, I got married on this day or I had children on this day or, um, you know, I, this half, this, I got this big promotion at work on this day. I bought a house on this day. You can tell those things to the astrologer and then using that information and the positions of the planets at that time, they can actually figure out what time you were born. I think that's so amazing. Mary says, yep. Yeah, my mom says I was born in the middle of her show. Yep. <laughs> Right? Like some point in the middle of the show, you were born. So they, an astrologer can figure that out for you. Now, typically, if you know within the hour range, like if you know you were born somewhere in the 8 p.m., 8 a.m. hour, like whatever, then you, your, your chart will be really accurate. But if you can get it down to the minute, um, that's awesome. And an astrologer can help you make it more accurate. I think that's mind blowing. Like that's one of my favorite things. Like they can figure that out based on the times and dates that the other really important events in your life have happened. Um, so once, once they really figure out the position of all of, of those things or, or kind of how they figure that out is they take your birth time and they take your birth place and they consult some tables that are called, I'm going to try to say this right, ephemeris, I think is how you say it, but it's spelled E-P-H-E-M-E-R-I-S. I think it's ephemeris. I might not be saying it right. Um, though those charts are basically charts of the location of the sun, moon, planets, etc., at all the times ever. <laughs> so they look up at that chart, um, and then they do some really cool things. Um, based, they compare everything to like Greenwich time, and they subtract like longitude wise from where you are, and they determine the position of all those things. Now, now that stuff is all automated, so super cool, but can you imagine back in the day being an astrologer and like having to do that all, like crazy, right? But now things will do that for you, and that's why the process is so automated, right? And then based on your natal chart, from, from the position of the sky and the stars and the moon, you can kind of forecast things in your future, or like when would be the best time, or the worst time to do stuff, how affected you'll be, you know, by, by looking at when in comparison to my birth chart, this is what, this is what I know about myself to be true. And in the future, like, let's say, do I want to get married in this month or that month? Which one? Um, if you consult your chart, you can see based on the positions of, of your birth chart and the positions of the planets at those times, what looks to be the best energetic forecast for me um, to make to do that, to make that happen. All right, and you can do that for anything. And that's why you can look at like the year ahead of you, you can get forecasts for that because they're comparing the position of the planets from when you were born to where they would be then and they're making adjustments and that's what those forecasts tell you. Again, it's nothing set in stone, 
a really good astrologer will emphasize that to you. They'll say, this is my recommendation based on the information I have for when to do this, but it's not a guarantee. And it doesn't mean that's the only thing you should do, right? Like, it's kind of like if you think about Mercury retrograde, you really shouldn't talk to any humans during Mercury retrograde. <laughs> like, because communication goes cuckoo. You shouldn't touch any electronics, use any of your, like, appliances, none of that. But we have to, right? Like, it's not always an option to do that. Can you imagine if you could not talk to anyone for whole Mercury retrogrades? That kind of sounds good to me. I don't know. <laughs> I'd miss you guys, but maybe if I could just come in this group and not go anywhere, that, that might be okay. But real life says you can't really do that. So you just want to take the information to, to make the best decision possible. Like I said, companies and businesses have astrologers on staff to look and compare these things, not only based on the, the people who work there, but also based on the a birth chart of the business. And, and when it came out, um, when it started, when it launched, they consider that it's birth when it started going. Um, and from there, they determine the position of, of the planets and the sun and the moon and all kinds of things and what house they're in and the modality attached and all that good stuff. And from there, they make their best decision as when to do things. So these are concepts that you can use as well. So that's what I get to tell you about birth charts, natal charts. I hope that helps you kind of understand them better. Super, super cool. Get yours done. It's astrologycafe.com. They're free. I don't get any kind of kickback from it. I just happen to like that website for um, for the, the, the birth charts because they're accurate and it's free and why not? <laughs> so check that out if you haven't. Let me know how your horoscope is, if it's accurate or not. And that's that. All right. I haven't I haven't stopped moving since very early this morning. So I'm going to go and relax on the couch and maybe drink some DiSereno. So have a good night. Get your natal chart done and tell me what you think if you haven't. If you've already had it done, tell me what you think. I'd love, I'd love to hear how accurate or not accurate it is. And if you don't know your birth time, like I said, do noon or midnight and then find an astrologer. I, I don't know one off the top of my head, but if I find one, I'll tell you. But find an astrologer and let them know the other important dates and they can narrow it down and help you help you to know that so that you can get a really accurate natal chart. It's worth its weight in gold, people. It's awesome. All right? Have an awesome, awesome night. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye, Rebels.